that we are going to not just support but, but stand up for for trans people. And so I, again I think it's important for us to to look at history but for us to also not contribute to the repetition of the marginalization of our own people. There's legal action with community action. On the one hand we can make reforms happen and on the other hand the work is far from done. It would be naive to say that we didn't have racism and sexism in our community. We didn't have gender issues. We didn't have this feeling of this is ours and I can't give up ours because I can't give you anything. I might lose something. And I'm, I'm, I'm concerned. What, what holds us together is our shared oppression. Is that going to be enough? These are things that we're picking ourselves apart for. We're missing the bigger picture and we're picking ourselves apart. I went to and or, or joined a coalition of people who were having an election event, and it was billed as a black LGBTQ event. So I'm now on the committee of this event, and it was all black gay men and me. <laughs> and they were fine. Oh, they had 10 meetings, and I was the first time I was invited, and they were fine with that. They thought, okay, great, you can bring the women back. I don't know all of it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the right wing misinformation campaign that is really translated to actual harm. I don't have to tell you about the, the horrific death in Oklahoma with Max Benedict. You know, Lori Carlton, uh, where an ally was shot for hanging a pride flag. The organizations that are out there, even what the volunteers are doing out there, they are really thinking about what it needs to be safe in these moments when we're asking. Parents and students and teachers who come up and actually testify on LGBTQ issues, we have to think about actual harm. That gives me hope is that the representation that we have with our community, we have 10% in Sacramento of the California legislature being LGBTQ folks. When you have members of our community at the table making our points look into the eye as they try to take away our rights, really means something. And so, Having LGBTQ folks running up and down the ballot across the state and really being out there being able to have to do for our rights is something that gives me hope, especially in these troubling times as we know. 2024 is going to be a wild roller coaster, but it gives me hope that we have our folks at, at the table fighting back for our They're coming for every letter of this coalition. Don't get a false sense of safety. Because so much of the animus is currently directed towards trans people. If you're old enough, you remember in the 70s there used to be this 
add campaign delayed potato chips. They used to say that you can't stop with just one. Uh, that's the way bigots are. They don't stop with just one. They pick off every group they don't like. Immigrants. Every letter of the LGBT is less coalition. BIPOC people. Disabled people. They're coming for all of us. They are chipping away at everything we've won in the last 50 years. Let's not get intimidated. Let's not lose hope. Despair is not a strategy. And it is too late for pessimism. And that imposes upon us a moral obligation to do the same thing for the people coming after us. Let's get to work. You know, we are going to make sure that we as a, as a community are, are integrated in the atmosphere of society, that we get to live dignified lives, that we get to be who we are, that we get not to be scared uh, when we walk down the street and thinking that we're going to be part of it. Um, so that's, that's the direction that we're going. Right? We as individuals and as a community, right, the gay lesbian community is very powerful, like politically and academically and economically, right? Um, and so we need to use our power to make sure that we organize, right? Because there is a, a well-funded and well-organized movement that is chipping away uh, the little gains that we have gotten in the last 50 years. Uh, and I say to our colleagues who are trans and non-binary, um, take heart. What you're saying is true and right. This is a very treacherous river that we have to cross. We have no choice. We have to cross it. But when we get to the other side, with your voices having been amplified, your stories having been heard, you will be known and your, your lives will have safety and security in a way that is not true until we do that work together. Um, we are part of a solution for the U.S. and also for the world as a whole. Uh, it's something that helps me have some perspective that the challenges we're dealing with here are, are large and they're, they're intimidating. They're even bigger on the world stage. And it's also true that we have more friends in more places than we've ever had before. We have more visibility and resources than we've ever had before. And we know what we're doing, we know how to prevail. So I, I do invite all of us to have that sense of, of uh, possibility and determination and also urgency. Because we know what to do, we can do it, and we do need to do it as urgently and effectively as we can. And we are doing the work that needs to happen. We are uh, lifting the language out of our are uh, organized, you know, we're mobilized. Uh, right now we have an initiative going here in Los Angeles, uh, our local government we want for them to invest in the livelihood of our community and supporting other transgender organizations. So we have an initiative, uh, ask, not asking, but demanding the Board of Supervisors to invest $7 million and $3 million from the city for a total of $10 million to support uh, transit organizations and supporting services for them. You know, we're fostering leaders. We are making sure that our community uh, continue to be valued, right? And that our society understand that we as trans people also uh, bring value to our society. And so I want to invite you, for all of you, to be part of that. Be part of the change, be part of uh, those possibilities that we all need to see. Uh, because we need to see positivity despite of the horrible things that we're experiencing right now. And we all can transform the society that we want to live in. What inspires me is that this next generation that's going to pick up the effort from all of us, they're going to make this movement so much stronger than we all have. And that is what we hope for the next week. You know, I have to say that I'm so impressed by our young people, and I'm so impressed by our culture as a whole. Because culture oftentimes gets there faster than, than the legal system. We need to be in action. And my friend, uh, and my friend, Tori Osborne's favorite quote is Joan Baez's quote about action is the antidote to despair. And I've got good news for you. There have been 12 cases 
fighting the bans and restrictions on health care for trans people, primarily trans young people, at the district court level. We won everything. I have enormous optimism because I see what's coming down the pipe and it looks really good.